Hello everybody, welcome to the sound test room. Today we are going to take a deep dive tutorial with Egoist by Sugarbytes. Marvellous groove box, incredibly good fun. Um, and it's capable of some very, very powerful stuff. So I'm going to take this real slow. I'm going to start with a completely empty project here as well. I'll take you through all the different sections, the slicer section, the bass and the beat section the effects section, and also the setup menu, which is quite important for certain things. Now, Egoist is updated regularly, okay? So it's not a forgotten app or anything like that. In fact, it was last updated about a month ago. So they keep looking after it and stuff. Now, I've done several tutorials over the years, but um, I always tend to choose samples that kind of don't explain what's going on so well. So today we're going to take this more easy. So... Initially, to find an empty project, right, you go to Sugarbytes A, and at the bottom, you will find empty, and you just select this, and it loads this empty project, okay? I want to first load in a sample. Now, it, it doesn't really matter about the length of the sample, whatever. <laughs> you can load in whatever you like. Loops are great, whatever you want. Sounds, noises, doesn't matter. Click on this section here, okay? And you will see you can use any of the samples that come with Egoist. And there are absolutely loads and loads and loads. You can even use your own user samples that you've imported. But I'm going to import a new sample. I'm going to go to Files. <clears throat> and I'm going to go to my T7 and look for, let's see. Um, let's see where I put it now. I think it was in Loops for Apps. And I'm looking for this one. It's added. It's C major. So I'm just going to highlight this and then open it. And what will happen is you'll see Ego, uh, Egoist will try and detect the first bunch of transients in this little sample. OK, if you want to listen to the sample as it is. Now, I've just done this chromatic C major scale, the chromatic C major scale going up. So you'll understand completely what's happening. Now, if I quickly press this it's just going to play slice one but if we want to hear what i actually recorded sometimes this doesn't work straight away this is the original sample it's in there okay what I'm going to do, first of all, is hit this, which says 16 slices. Now, the sensitivity here, this will select transients depending on how you have this set. I'm going to hit 16 slices, and what it's going to do is it's going to divide my little loop into 16 equal slices. You can pick any of these and move them around. You can do whatever you want, but I'm just going to go with the basic 16 slices for now. So you 16 slices, and these are represented here in the slice sequencer. So, for example, I'm going to press this little X, and it's going to put all M slices going up. So this last one will play slice 16. So now it'll sound like this. Which is a little bit muddy, but there's things we can do to sort that out straight away. So if I just press play... So if your sample needed to be a little bit louder as well, you have this, which is your kind of sample volume. You also have a, a, a slicer volume in total here. And then you also have a master volume and a volume fader for the bass and a volume fader for the beat. And a switch to switch the effects on because the effects inside Egoist are global. Right, okay. Now, while we're at this stage, I'm going to show you the settings and you'll know why it's important, right? At the moment, you'll see I have monophonic slicer and it's not, it's turned off by default, right? So if I play this, if I switch this on, it stops it overlapping. So now I could maybe increase the length again.
OK. So you can randomize. Don't hit randomize, but it randomizes the sample. OK, so it will choose another sample. You can control the pitch up and down two octaves. Um, I mean, I happen to know this is recorded in C anyway, so obviously. Okay, so let's quickly go back here, right? Internal, external, host start. Well, we're using it as a standalone. It is an AUV3, so I'm going to leave it on internal. This is your project tempo. So, for example, we could say, well, well let's have this a bit slower. Let's put it back to 120 or close as. So again, related to tempo here is the resolution. It says tempo, but it's actually the grid, the resolution for the actual things. Listen. So we'll leave that back on 116. Now you can also control the resolution here as well. So at the moment it's 116th, but now I'm going to half that. Okay. And then this one will reverse the sequence. This one will send the sequence backwards and forwards, or well, forwards and backwards. And this one will just choose random slices from this sequence grid. So just for now, let's leave it going forward and finish off with the actual settings, right? So. This will just take you to the basic app settings where you can, you know, buy now, restore, see more sugar bite apps, etc., etc. Usual stuff. The maximizer is, uh, well, it is, it says max out, but it's a maximizer. So listen. So be careful with that because it, it can boost, you know, if it's quiet, it's great. Or you can set it kind of subtle. Right. We'll leave that off for now. Right, so moving on, we've got our monophonic slicer and we have slicer time base, right? So, so it gives you a different vibe on the slices. Ignore program changes. Uh, well, you can have that on or off. It's up to you, depending on whether you're doing MIDI and stuff. Direct pattern change, I'm going to turn off. Because what happens is these are your patterns down here, and you can have up to 16 patterns. And then you have a part and a song mode, but that's for later. So 16 patterns. If I change a pattern, if I change the pattern two, there's absolutely nothing in pattern two, but if I play pattern one... pattern two is empty but it waits till the end of the pattern before it changes i quite like that master tune if you watch the fine tune slicer and the fine tune bass okay so you can fine tune the slicer, you can fine tune the bass, or you can fine tune all of it, right? Open the manual, kind of self explanatory, bounce audio to uh, bounce audio and share. You can, you know, choose where you want it to go by the looks of it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. Oh, CC preset isolate as well. We don't need to worry about that because I'm not using any MIDI mapping for this particular video, but you can if you want to. Okay. Right, let's carry on with this. So we've looked at the effect, the um, settings as well. They're kind of basic stuff. 
you, like I said, the most important things are like, do you want it to be like a monophonic slice or do you want it to be polyphonic? So. <laughs> I want this to be monophonic for the video. So, right. Okay. Cool beans. Now we know what the T1, this, and this is time and the forwards, backwards. That, that's kind of obvious, right? We also know what this does. We'll just set it all going up like this. These buttons here will move it along. These will move it up and down. Like that. You can reset it here to go up. You can randomize it here. Get some interesting results, of course. Let's just set it going up. Right, now, this here controls the length of the sequence. Now, this is important because you can set different lengths of sequence per different pattern. In fact, you can change everything per pattern. Cool. These will reverse the particular step. Okay, you can also manually adjust the steps, of course. So you can say, well, we're like, okay, and then I'll have a couple of ones play here, maybe couple of those fives and let's bash in a bunch of 16s or another couple of ones some 13s and a 12 and now you've got a completely different type of vibe and maybe you want this going backwards and forwards Right. Now we get into the pitch section. This here will take any. Right, let's set this up again as a kind of just going up as a scale. This first one here is semitones. So, for example, we could take that up three semitones. Let's take this one. Actually, switch it back on. Oh, it's on. It's just selected. Take this one up four. We'll take this one up maybe five. Oops, that's my octave one. I'll show you that in a sec. We'll take this one up seven. You get the idea, right? We'll take this one up seven as well. Underneath here is your octave. Now you can have it go, if you hold and lift and swipe up, it'll go up an octave, drag back down to take it away, or go down an octave, right? So we could set some different kind of octave ranges for these and maybe again another couple of changes to the actual semitones of the sequence Now, you can go through this by hand and take them out, or you can just hit this little X and it will delete everything in your pitch section. Moving down, moving down now, this is your attack, your decay, and your a level pair slice. And very cool. And these across the top, when you tap on a number, it will mute it. So you can kind of stutter gate all this. 
This is a level control, so let's pick one that's active. Okay. And you can randomize this stuff. Oh, delete it and just reset it. So you get a basic idea of how the actual uh, sequencer works, right? So <clears throat> at this point, it might be more interesting now to add in a much nicer kind of sample and that you get that because that this is the slicer section, how it goes up, how it goes down. You, you kind of get it right. So um, they use the uh, just the scale going up and down to explain everything right now. I'll get into copying patterns and stuff like this in a moment. But now you understand how this whole page works. Right. What we're going to do now is go in here to user and I will just go. I think is it uh, I can either use I think I could use basic contact or I think I'll use CM. So this now. I'll just stop this. This is the sequence. In fact, I might have an actual better one than that I could use. Uh, yeah, look, this Santor one. So I'm going to go into my bass and beats here and just delete all this stuff that might be going on. I've got three patterns there, right? So let's go back to our slicer. So I am going to basically just reset this as it was and quickly get this into the buffer so you can hear it. Sometimes it doesn't work. So this is the sequence. That's the loop we're going to use for the rest of the video because it's much nicer than that other one, right? And it, it allows us to do some very cool stuff. So, so all these others are empty. So I have three patterns, but they're all identical, right? So I'm going to play this one. We can move some of this. Okay, cool beans. We know how this works, right? Go into our effects and let's add some effects. Turn that off to just to the drums. So the effects are a filter, a delay, a reverb, a lo-fi chorus, a stop and a loop. And they're all represented here. If I want reverb across the entire thing, I could just draw it in like this. And now the whole thing will have reverb on depending on how it's set here. So let's just start this off. Okay, but the cool thing is we can mix and match these. Cool. Delay. To change this
add some more effects in. In fact, what I'm going to do put that on 116 for them. Awesome. So what I'm going to do now is go back to my slice. It doesn't matter what page I'm on for this next part. Copying this little icon here, this little double file. If you tap on this, it will copy each individual section. It will copy the pitch section and it will copy the actual level and, you know, attack and decay section. This will copy everything. And this is best practice for, for me. And I think you'd probably agree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tap on that. Go to pattern two and I'm going to tap this. And now everything here that's in pattern one will now be copied to pattern two. And if we play it and go to pattern two, it's identical, right? Well, now we can make some changes. Let's, um, So this is playing pa slice eight, slice 10, which is great. Let's take a few out. Maybe, no, let's leave the pitch the same. So if I go back to pattern one now, Okay. Let's go to pattern two. It's our new pattern. Let's copy that pattern. Go to pattern three. And paste that in. Make a few more adjustments maybe to this. Awesome, I like that. Make these a bit more snappier. Maybe reverse that one. Okay, cool. Let's go to our bass and beats now. Let's just stop this, explain how this works. So it's a basic TB303 style bass sequencer. If you know the key, then you're golden. I'm pretty much in D minor, so I, I know that. What you do here is you can either just hit this and it will populate it with some notes, or you can tap on it and it'll give you a selection of notes. So for example, if it's this one with this little arrow, like this, and if I do four of those, this is just going to be like one long sustained note. So if I press play. Okay. If I do maybe this one. So this is all going to be D and it's all D minor. Well, at the moment, these are all playing just a D note. Underneath here is, again, your semitone adjustment. So we could make a few adjustments in semitones. Sorry, let's just reset the tonage. That's this bottom one with the little musical note by it. That's fine now. We'll change the notes. Oh no, it's because it's one long sustained. Note that. Okay. 
Now the synth itself is really quite good. Different filter types. And if we go to our effects, turn effects on for the bass. It'll pick up because he's a global effects over there. So stop. This is pattern number three. Let's copy the entire pattern, go over to number four and paste it all in. And it's pasted in that little bass line as well. Let's add in some drums. Okay, so the drums may appear to be quite basic, but let's put some in. You have different kits. Uh, you have a few you can choose here, different types of this is mythical. Modular kit. But the cool thing is here, let's put some snare in. And a bit of For each of these for each of these kits there is I think it's about 30 different kits inside each kit sort of thing. So pick a main kit and then there are about 30, 32 sub kits. Okay. See them all changing here. But what you can do then is individually change out. Any of those drums in the different 30 kits, mixers here, attenuator, tuning, but you can change the kit. Very cool. Loads of stuff you can do. Okay. So you kind of get that right. It's kind of self explanatory, right? But let's take out different velocity levels, right? So one tap, gone. Loudest. Gone. So different velocity levels by choosing and multi-tapping the pad. So I'm going to take these out. So bring this bass back in now. And this is number four, right? Copy. Randomize. Go to 
lot of facts. Okay, now, so very quickly we've built up a little Right, so now you've built up your bunch of patterns, right? Let's say now you want to make a song, right? So first of all, we go into part. Okay, so this is part A. We have part A, B, C, D, E and F. So this is part A and these are the patterns that relate to part A. So for example, at the moment, part A is going to play pattern one. If we go into song mode here, part A is going to play pattern one just all the live long day. Right, so if we play. Just that's all it's going to do. So, what we want to say is, well, like, I don't need this to be that long. I don't need all the different pattern chains. So, I'm going to take this down to four and I'm going to play pattern one, then pattern two, pattern one, then pattern two. And now. Right, okay, so in our song, our first one here, let's go with this. Let me go in with just... All right, you could have this one B, B, and this one B, C. If we go back to part now, let's go to part B, okay, and we'll have this to be pattern three. Pattern three, pattern maybe pattern four, and then pattern three. Okay, so this is part B now. So maybe it would be better if it was pattern four in there. So pattern three, pattern four. And if we go to C now, you see it revert each time. Each of these can be pattern five. And this is how you do it. You see, on and on and on you go building up your patterns and your parts and then your song. Now, if we go to, and these can be longer, of course, you know that. And this is the resolution that these will play. So it's 16, it's all kind of going over one bar, but you can make it go faster. You make it go. You can make it go super quick, but it's. It, I much prefer it like this. So we've go to song now, and we we're gonna limit this to playing A, B, C, and then it'll go back to A, B, C. So if we hit play now, sorry. I 
and that's how you do it. And that is Sugar Bite Egoist, basically all of it. You can have tons of fun and go absolutely bonkers. Now, if you've watched this video premiere, thank you very much. Much appreciated. Please strike that like. If you watch it any other time, of course, please strike the like and thank you for watching. Uh, yeah, top job, cool beans. I hope this is was a more simplified tutorial to kind of get you to understand how this works. It's, it's really quite straightforward. The drum kit is actually really quite deep. Bear in mind, you pick, you pick one of the main kits sort of thing, and then within that kit, you have like 32 different other kits, and you've got your controls. You've got your little bass synth. It's cool. You can, you know, kind of randomize anything you like, your drums and stuff. It's, you know what I mean? It's really cool. I mean, pattern song mode here, so. And then you can go up to have, I mean, we only used, what, five patterns, but you can have up to 16 patterns. And then the parts can have up to eight patterns per part. So these are your parts. You can have eight patterns playing any order you like per part up to 16 patterns of course but we've only got five and then in your song you can have it like hugely arranged and you could have this play a twice and then you could go right well i'll have it play b you could have this extended along here of course and then it could play c for x amount of times you get the idea very powerful don't forget your uh, settings as well are really important. You've got your maximizer. You've got your how your slice timer works, your mono slices and stuff. I mean, you completely change the vibe. Pretty cool, eh? Guys, thank you very, very much for watching, and I will see you later. Ta -ra.